Mike. Cassie, what's the matter? <laughs> They're killing me. It's officially suicide. They released Cassie's body this morning for commission. You, I want the man who walked her off that rooftop. <laughs> I knew Cassie. It's like seeing your own kid die. Tell me about Nathan Backus. Now, how did Cassie get mixed up with the mob? He financed her last two pictures. Said she had a weapon. What was the weapon? I finally found out what you were afraid of. You gotta give me that diary. I suppose I mentioned. You bet, Russ. everybody. Even a high priestess of the movies like Cassie Conroy in her 30-story concrete temple. Cassie lived in the rarefied ozone of glamour, fame, and the love of millions. There was only one person alive whose love and approval she never learned how to win. Herself. There. This is the service. Look, you tell Tony damn well better call me back. Tonight, he can just forget about his 15%. Yes, Miss Conroy, we have your other message. Yeah. Cassie, what's the matter? I know I have no right to call, but I really need somebody to talk to. Could you come over? Please? Are you all right? Oh, Mike, I need to talk to somebody. Please, Mike. All right, all right, just calm down now. They're killing me. I'm telling you, 
You have to help me. Cassie, I'll be right over. Give me ten minutes. Well, look who's here. I'm afraid your farewell dinner is cold. And so am I. I've warned you. I don't wait for you anymore. that she hit the headlines. Every paper from New York to New Delhi screamed out in horror at Cassie Conroy's suicide. But I was convinced that wasn't how she died. Mike, I want you to run that phone conversation down to me again. All right, she called me. She said she wanted to talk. She'd been drinking. She sounded desperate like somebody wanted to kill her. No indication she was going to jump. None whatsoever. Look, I was there, Pat. I saw it. Remember, she did not jump. From 20 floors down, you saw her. Mike, all the signs are there, the booze, the pills. The prescription bottle we found had 50 second in them. There's only four left. Then why jump? I don't know. Maybe she wanted to build up her nerve or something. Mike, run that phone conversation by me again. I can tell you this. She did not say, come over here and stop me. I'm thinking of jumping off the balcony. I'm telling you, Pat, it was murder. Somebody wanted to kill her, and that's what happened. You're going to have to give me better than that. Mr. Prosecutor, is it true the coroner has ruled Cassie Conroy's death a suicide? Is there anyone with her when she jumped? Sorry. Larry, excuse me. Larry. Hi, Tony Peltzer. Remember me? Of course I remember you, Tony. Cassie Conroy's agent. Right. This is Giselle Lyman, my assistant. How do you do? Uh, we need some help. They won't let us up here. Well, Tony, we can't let anyone up until the investigation's completed. Cassie wasn't only my client, she was also my friend. Now, you're going to need some help with the media. This is a very high-profile case. Okay, come on. Thanks. Uh, uh Evidence. You don't trust me? That's sad. I know him much too well. Harry, bag that. What you got? Preliminary suicide. What are you doing here? Thought I might take a room. Cassie called him just before she jumped. He's a witness. Imagine mine not knowing that. Mm. How do you come to know a big star like Cassie Conroy? She happened to be a friend of mine. I get to a phone and call Russ Geringer. He'll kill me if he doesn't get this in his column first. And just I'll play up the tragedy, the anguish of celebrity little girl lost. Sure. I'd ask him if lunch is possible. His table around uh, one. Okay, Tony, no problem. Okay. Well, Tony, I'm surprised to see you here. I thought by now you'd be out auctioning off her clothes. I resent that. Emma, why are you insulting this man? You can't insult a guy like Tony Belter. To him, that was a compliment, right, Tony? Please, Mike, not here. Yes, really, not here. This man has just suffered a brutally tragic loss. Brutally tragic, that's quotable. You ought to plant that in one of the columns. Mike, you may not like me, but I'm just as sad about this as you are. Yeah, I'll bet you are. It must break your heart to lose that commission. I couldn't lose the memory of Cassie and how she was six years ago. How we both were. Gentlemen, with the help of lovely Cassie, the great Mandrell will manifest a rabbit. Right. Just five more minutes, okay? I'm timing it. <laughs> Me too. Time has a way of running out. And Cassie had places to go a galaxy away from the world I lived in. 
The next time I turned around, she was soaring into the stratosphere. And even the rain couldn't wash away the memory. As for the great Mandrell, he'd seen better days. Go away. And so had his liver. Manny. I don't want to talk about Mike. Manny, I thought the doctor told you this stuff would kill you. I'm sorry, Manny. I wanted to get here before you heard the news. MTV. I, I only bought it so I could... so I could keep up with Cassie, you know. I guess it's like seeing your own kid die. A parent should die before his children. There's too much pain. There should be some kind of an order to things. And she damn well didn't kill herself. How do you know? I knew Cassie. She loved life too much. Listen, Manny. Cassie called me before she died. When was the last time you heard from her? Well, she hadn't called me for a couple of months, but I think I got a... A letter from her. Yeah, I got one this week. No matter what's going on in this world, she always managed to write to me. She was thinking of killing herself, but sure not in here. Are these all from Cassie? Yeah. Would you mind if I borrow them? It depends on what you want to do with them. One of those smut sheets would sure like to get her hands on them. Manny, I promise you, I'll take good care of him and I'll get him back to you as soon as possible. Okay. How's his figure? Cassie was a lousy magician's assistant, clumsy, a real lux. She does a does a bit part in a in a B picture, and, and the whole country falls in love with her. Yeah, I guess they were just behind the rest of us. Damn, Tony Belzer. Cassie was a sweet kid until he came along. So beautiful. I remember. Take care of yourself, man. Special delivery. What's this? Private reading. Underline private. I need a breakdown on names and dates. Gotcha. You've got a client waiting. Who is it? Brad Sterling. I might have guessed. Brad Sterling's marriage to Cassie had made him the most photographed quarterback in America. Their breakup and a bad knee had put him on the taxi squad and aspirin commercials. 42 sweep left. How's it going, Brad? Not too good, Mike. What were you doing there? Cassie called me. Why you? She could have called me any time she knew that. She always called you when she had a problem. Well, she married you, pal. Yeah, and I blew that. I wasn't much of a husband trying to keep up with her. She moved too fast, Mike. After a couple of lousy pictures, she had every stud in Hollywood bird-dogging her. Yeah, I know. How'd she feel about you? I don't know. Yes. She said I was smothering her. Hell, maybe I was. I doubt if she even knew I'd gone until she read about it in the Inquirer. Hey, quit your moaning, pal. If you want sympathy, you came to the wrong place. I don't want sympathy. I want to hire you. I want the man who walked her off that rooftop. Police say it was suicide. Suicide, Cassie? No way. Now, there was a guy responsible one way or the other. You can bet on that. What's that? Hey, forget it. Hey, I can afford it. You know what they say, old quarterbacks never die. They just get sacked. And then they go on to make television endorsements selling shoes, power tools, and popcorn. Brad, I'm on the case anyway. Forget your money. But I could use a pair of brown loafers and a buzzsaw. You got it. Brad wanted a name. When Velda finished with the letters, I had lots of names. Most of them were Tony Belzer. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure talking to you, Sophia, darling. Ciao. All right, Russ, listen. Yes. I should have you crucified, Tony. Both the Times and the News beat me on the story by two hours. I can make this up to you, Russ. I promise. Listen, 
I've got an angle. Oh, yes. You always have an angle. Uh, I could also have an angle. How's this? Tony Belzer, star maker, star destroyer. His driving ambition killed poor Cassie. Make a hell of a column. Russ, you wouldn't do that. No? No, listen, listen. Everybody's doing the fallen sex symbol stuff. Why don't you do an elegy, a graceful piece? Classy Cassie, fallen star, but I give you her successor, the rising star. Your client, no doubt. Elizabeth Warren, she's a natural. She's got everything Cassie had, and I give you credit for her discovery. Oh, your generosity overwhelms me. <laughs> you allow me the privilege of making her an overnight sensation so you can collect your commissions. <laughs> what a generous man you are. Hello, Tony. Uh, not now, Hammer, I'm busy. Hammer? Would that be Mike Hammer, the peripatetic detective? I've read quite a lot about you. Uh, please, don't delay your conversation on my account. Thanks. You heard the man, Tony. Come on, let's talk. Please, I said I'm busy. You know my track record. With your help, Russ, Elizabeth's a lock for any movie Cassie was up for. What did I call her? Get her over here. I said let's talk. Mike, listen. Oh, oh, oh. Gee. Here, pal, take a breather. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh! Damn it. You broke my nose. I don't think so, but we can work on it. Russ Garage is the most influential columnist in this country. Do you have any idea how much you cost me? It's gonna be a lot cheaper than plastic surgery. Now, wait. I'm gonna run some names by you, and I want you to tell me what they had to do with Cassie. DeBell, Cooper, Marston, Caldwell. Where'd you get those? Never mind. Here's another one for you, Nathan Backus. Now, how did Cassie get mixed up with the mob? I wasn't her babysitter. She passed it around like nickel candy. You passed her around, Tony. You weren't her agent, you were her pimp. Now, tell me about Nathan Backus. He financed her last two pictures. I introduced him, that's all. Cassie made her own choices. Yeah, like stepping off that balcony? Look, Hammer, I loved Cassie like everybody else. She had magic and knew how to use it. When she died, I lost six years' work, maybe ten. You're gonna lose a lot more than that if you had anything to do with her death. You're out of here, bozo. Oh, yeah? Very macho, Mr. Hammer. Embarrassing and messy, but macho. And what, if I may ask, have you done with Tony? I left him in the men's room copying phone numbers off the wall. Brad Sterling admitted he was jealous. Cassie's letters gave him every reason to be. Each step of her career was carpeted with another man. A producer, a director, an actor. Where did Nathan Backus fit in? She couldn't tell me, yet there she was in living color. The star dies, and before the body's cold, every old movie in their library has been resurrected. But then vultures don't gather over the living. Fuller with the times. So? I understand you're investigating the death of Cassie Conroy. I'm sorry, I'm not talking to the press right now. Oh! Well, uh. I'm talking to you. Ah! Ah! It's a message from Bacchus. <laughs> Don't push. We push back. Now, the girl's dead. Unless you want to join her, let it stay that way. It's better for everybody. Ah! After a storm, the city smells as clean as it ever gets. But it would take a lot of storms to clean up the mess that was clinging to Cassie's murder. I was in no mood for socializing. But Pat Chambers wanted me to meet him at the scene of the crime.
some ID. Thank you. It's okay. Let him in. You don't look too happy. What's the matter? I'm a cop. You know a lot of happy cops? Yeah. What's bugging you? Oh, nothing. I just hit a guy in the fist with my kidneys. That must have hurt. Mm. This is gonna hurt, too. Coroner's report, suicide. Well, why does that bother you? You were happy with it last night? Last night was last night. This stinks. Look at the blood analysis. No drugs, just booze. Not even enough to rate a 502. Mike, I was thinking about what you said. Somebody did kill her. I knew you'd come around sooner or later. Captain, if there's nothing else, I have quite a schedule. It'll be fine. You're a great help. Thanks a lot. Who's that? Building manager. I guess they want to rent this place. You're kidding. They didn't lose a nickel. Rent was paid for a whole year. Wait a minute. Cassie didn't spend that much time in New York. Who paid for it? It was a cashier's check. It wasn't that much drawn on her account. Mike, it was murder. I don't have a chance at hell of proving it. What about an inquest? Take it to a coroner's jury. It's not going to be a jury. Pressure, big pressure. Barrington's catching it, I'm catching it, local, state, and federal. Where's it coming from? I don't know, but it's officially suicide. They released Cassie's body this morning for cremation. Who to? Her ex-husband, Brad Sterling. OK, thanks. What are you going to do? Apply a little pressure on my own. Brad Sterling was given custody of Cassie's body, and he'd taken it to a place where even the most celebrated get poured into a vase. A strong light on the urn. Manny. Brad called me. He didn't want to go through the cremation alone. We tried to reach you. I haven't been to the office yet. What's she doing here? Tony Belzer asked her to set up the memorial service. Brad didn't want it, but you know Tony. Got anything yet? Yeah, a lot of questions. Like, who paid for the penthouse that Cassie used when she was in town? Well, not me. Even though I would have done anything to bring her back to me. Do you have any idea? Tony kept Cassie cash poor. Tax shelters, investments. She was always complaining about him being cheap with everyone but himself. Uh-oh. Cassie couldn't afford it. OK, thanks. Mike, the service is at 11 tomorrow. Cassie would have wanted you to be here. I'll see you at 11. Mr. Hammer. Mike. Hi, I'm Giselle Lyman. I saw you outside Cassie's apartment the night she died. Oh, yeah, I remember. I'm Tony Belzer's assistant. That's not much to brag about. Look, the only reason I work for Tony, there's no better in his field. You learn at the top, you work at the top. Yeah, some top. Half the junk magazines on your friendly checkout counter would disappear without people like Tony. Sometimes the real truth would do a lot more damage in those magazines. Now, come on. If you're going to tell me the lady was a tramp, forget it. I've heard that tune before. I wasn't. You may find this hard to believe, but Cassie and I were friends. We were good friends. Really? Did she tell you who was coming to dinner the night she died? No. What I do know is Cassie was trying to turn her life around. Tony forgot there was a human being underneath the image. She was being pulled in so many different directions. Her life was a shambles. Speaking of shambles, what do you know about a guy named Nathan Backus? Nathan? He's just a fan. He invested in a couple of her pictures. Uh, real solid citizen, huh? Especially with the Senate Rackets Committee. Look, what I wanted to tell you is, Cassie asked me to represent her. She was going to make a break for Tony. Come on. Tony would never let a meal ticket like Cassie get away. Cassie had finally decided to take control of her life. She said she had a weapon to make it happen. Really? What was the weapon? I don't know. But you are right about Tony. He wouldn't let Cassie get away. The lady raised more questions than she answered, but maybe that's what comes with working at the top. No gas, no hot wax. I don't want to ruin my image. You got it. I wasn't in the habit of getting my car washed, but today I had a good reason. I noticed a familiar face in my rearview mirror, the guy who worked for Nathan Backus, Fuller from the Times. Now it was going to be my turn to give him a news flash.
Here you go, keep the change. And get the dirt off that guy's windshield. The time had come to catch up with Tony Belzer. I found him working on a centerfold for his latest layout. No, 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 Elizabeth, honey, you look like a klutz. I told you to stay on the diet. Hell, if you really want something, you gotta pay for it. Lester, Lester, if we untie the bikini, what'll that do for the baby fat? Baby fat? I can squeeze the angle. How lean do you want her? I want her to look like Cassie, damn it. Mr. Belzer, I don't do nudes. Playboy offered me $25,000. Hefner wouldn't touch you with an airbrush the way you're handling your face. Look at your eyes. What'd you do last night? Run with a grunion? Make up. Do something with her eyes. And you. All right, get up. Stand up. All right, you offer the bikini. I make stars, not prom queens. You decide what you want, Elizabeth, or I am through. Tony, I want to talk to you. Oh, forget it, Hammer. I got problems here. You're going to have some real problems unless I get some answers. Now, let's talk. All right, everybody, take five. I said, everybody, go on, get out of here, scram. Nobody gets it. Nobody understands what I do or gives a damn. Without me, Cassie would have been just another, another mousy little brunette with a trunk full of ambition. She would have wound up with a platoon of rug rats pulling at her skirt. At least she'd still be alive. Now, before she died, she wanted to leave you, didn't she? That's a perfect motive for murder. We've been through all this. I didn't kill Cassie. I know, you loved her. What do you want? You want Cassie to look like a saint? I can manage that. You want a statue of her on Liberty Island? It's taken. You want vengeance? It's just not here. I want some truth, pal. I want you to tell me what made Cassie decide to leave you. That was just talk. You know this town. Just rumors. Cassie was my biggest client. I'm not stupid. Maybe, maybe not. But you're nervous. Nervous enough to ask a guy like Nathan Backus to put the pressure on me? Oh, you're crazy. You, you got problems with Backus? Talk to Backus. I plan to. Good luck in your career, sweetheart. Tony, you're sure about this? Trust me. Love you, sweetheart. Get back on the sheet. If Elizabeth Warren trusted Tony the way Cassie did, I just hope she owned a parachute. It seemed as though all roads led to Nathan Backus. But before I could pay him a visit, somebody I wasn't expecting paid me one. And Brad Sterling died than the night I saw Cassie floating like a ribbon in the sky. What is it, Hammer? Your apartment is like an elephant burial ground. I mean, people only seem to come there to die. Yeah, well, you ought to pay me a visit, Larry. Maybe the same urge will strike you. No, 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 listen to me. I'm serious. Give him a break. He's been in the Conroy case since the beginning. Listen, Cassie Conroy's death caused a sensation. Her ex-husband's death made it a catastrophe. I'm getting phone calls from people I only address by their titles. Now, why? Brad Sterling must have told you something. He never had a chance to tell me a thing. He died right in my arms. Listen, nobody's accusing you of anything. Thank you. But we have a major PR problem here. A personage of the visibility of Cassie Conroy dies, her ex-husband dies, and you refuse to cooperate? I'm not refusing anything. Listen, I called you, remember? Listen, we're talking about murder here. We're not talking about suicide. Believe me, I'm considering reopening the Conroy case. Well, it's about time, and while you're at it, look into a guy named Nathan Backus. Nathan, ba Nathan Backus? He's with the syndicate. So was Al Capone. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I've got a funeral to attend. Nice talking to you. Bye. Wait a minute. Emma! Emma! I kept seeing Cassie floating like a ribbon in the sky. It was hard to believe that her play would close so soon. I had been there when it was just about to open. Mmm, smells like barbecue chicken. I love barbecue chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't supposed to be barbecue. <laughs> oh. I got home late from my audition. You had an audition? Yeah, of course, I had lots of auditions. How else am I supposed to be a big star? You really want to be an actress, huh? Yeah, I don't have a choice. I'm a lousy cook. Well, listen, everybody's entitled to one flaw. Mm, providing they excel in other areas. And you certainly do. 
Well, thank you. Reporter, you're going to replace Cassie Conway in her next picture. Please, no interviews. Cassie was my idol. Russ, you're a columnist. What implications do you find in the death of Brad Sterling? This is not the time. <sighs> nice little quiet memorial service. Yeah, I've seen smaller crowds at Yankee Stadium. Did you read this? Russell Garinger. Amazing. Buries one movie queen and installs another on the same page. Yeah. Who's Elizabeth Warren, anyway? Do you think the readers really take someone like her seriously? Sweetheart, that's how stars are made. What'd you get on the will? Well, it was recorded about six months ago. She left the California house to Brad, and a sizable amount goes to Manny. Sounds like Cassie. There was something about an assignment of rights to a Dorothy Haynes. Who's Dorothy Haynes? I haven't been able to run that down yet, but Tony is listed as the executor. I wonder if he still collects his 15%. Keep working on it. <laughs> just your name, Garinger? I figured you'd write a whole page. You're not just uncouth, Hammer. You're tasteless. I take lessons of you, pal. I read your column. Come along, Elizabeth. Late. I didn't think you were going to make it. Terrible thing about Brad. Yeah, it's a sad day all around. Listen, you by any chance haven't seen Dorothy Haynes. She didn't sign in. Dorothy Haynes? I understand she's a friend of Cassie's. Well, she was Cassie's secretary, but Dorothy died over a year ago. They're dropping like flies. Giselle, are you sure the lighting guy has his cues? He's ready. What about the music? All set. OK, let's go. to smile. Cassie was always late, but she sure knew how to make an entrance. Dear friends, we're gathered here today to mourn the passing star. Yet Cassie was more than that. She was a legend. In six short years, she captured the hearts of this country. Common people who only bought a ticket. People who didn't know her as the wonderful girl that you and I knew. Yet they loved her as I loved her. as you loved her. Hammer. Get in. Mr. Bacchus wants to talk to you. That's an invitation, Mr. Hammer. Give him your keys. He'll bring your car. Take it easy. The no brakes, the transmission's out, and the windshield wipers don't work. And I want it that way when I get it back. Tragic. It's tragic. A beautiful woman. Yeah, you look devastated. Fuller tells me you're a tough nut. None too tough to crack. I liked Cassie. 
She reminded me of my wife when she was young. Yeah, not to mention the fact that you made a bundle financing her films. Yes. It was my pleasure to back her. What else was it your pleasure to do to her? My relationship with Cassie was strictly business. I'm sure your wife is delighted to hear that. So get to the point. I'd like you to find another case. I'm happy with the one I'm on. Listen, Hammer, everybody's got somebody that they got to answer to. Even in my position. It's the way of the world. Yeah? Who's big enough to make you sweat? Who says I'm sweating? Who do you have to answer That's to? That's none of your concern. Look, pal, somebody's got to answer for Cassie Conroy and Brad Sterling. I think it's you. Listen, Hammer. Let's make an agreement. You find yourself another case, and we're both happy. I don't feel happy. You work at it. Nathan Backus had thrown me a curve, and I swung at it. But the question remained, who the hell did he answer to? Hi, Mike. Hi. I got some information on our lady, Dorothy Haynes. Yeah, what do you got? Okay. She was born in Sacramento, 1961, moved to L.A. Then she joined the Screen Extras Guild. She kept up her membership for three years and then went back to college. Graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Since then, nothing. Not even a driver's license. Okay, good. Now listen. You said Manny was in Cassie's will. How much money are we talking about? Well, ballpark figure, over a million. But the way it was written, with Brad Sterling out of the picture, five million is a closer figure. Manny's the remaining beneficiary. By the way, he called and he's got to see you right away. Okay, tell these people I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Okay. Giselle Lyman called several times, though, and she was very persistent. I'm not surprised. Working with Tony Belcher can do that to you. I'll check with you later. Okay. I didn't want to think that Manny Mandrell had anything to do with Cassie's death. But with the money she left him, he sure could buy a lot of rabbits. Suspicion is a rotten feeling when you're wrong. Poor Manny. He'd left a note for me. Mike, I can't find any more magic. I'm sorry. I was sorry, too. Well, Mike, this is a pleasant surprise. Hello. Hey. Nice joint. Expense account. I live out of a suitcase. I need a drink. How about you? Scotch all right? No, thanks. How well did you know Manny Mandrell? I knew that he was a friend of Cassie's. He just killed himself. I can't believe it. Really? I thought you'd understand that better than anybody, Dorothy. That is your legal name, isn't it? Dorothy Haynes? Yes, it is. A little less glamorous than Giselle Lyman, but in that showbiz, right? I think we better talk this out, Mike. The way you talked it out with Cassie? She thought you were going to protect her, didn't she? I told you. I was Cassie's friend. Maybe Dorothy Haynes was, but that loyalty changed with your name. Even so, she trusted you. She even left you an assignment of rights. Rights to what? It's nothing. A diary. A diary? The one you were going to publish if anything happened to her. That was her weapon, wasn't it? Some things are better kept private. Yeah, so you can use it for your own purposes. A little friendly blackmail, right? Tony taught you very well, Dorothy. Power. That's what makes your motor run, isn't it? That and other things. Sorry, sweetheart. Bad timing. I'm a lot like Cassie. That's why we understood each other so well. To want something, that's no crime. Withholding evidence of murder is. Now, if you try to use that diary for anything, you could wind up even more like Cassie. Dead. So you've got a choice. Either give me the diary or give it to the police. This could cause a lot of damage. Use it carefully. Don't worry. I have a healthy respect for weapons. Mm -hmm. 
It was a long night of bad reading, but the answers were there. By the time Cassie realized the price of stardom, it was too late. Hello, Tony. Nice of you to drop by. Mike, if you've got an ounce of pity, you got to give me that diary. I swear I'll make things right. What do you want it for? It's my only chance. So, Mike, you name your price. Everybody's got a price. And I have mine. Right here. I finally know what you're afraid of, Tony. I read about it. You pushed Cassie too far, and now it's gonna blow up in your face. Damn it, Mike. I love Cassie. I worked my butt off for her. You used her like a stack of poker chips. The game was sex. You taught her how to play, because without her, you wouldn't even have an ante. But with her, you could have it all. Producers, politicians, money, media, power. Mike, you gotta believe me. It was for her, too. Mike, I need that diary. <laughs> Tony Beltzer just collected his last commission. Cassie's diary led me to the person I needed to talk to. I called him and told him to meet me at her apartment. I was sure he knew the way. Take a letter? I said, would you take a letter? This one. I love you. Please marry me. Hammer. I only tolerate this summons so I can warn you. If I choose, I can see you never work in this city again. Yes, I know. The power of the pen. Russell Geringer, the voice of the people. Well, come on in, Russ. Sit down. Watch the movie. After all, it was your column that made Cassie a star. Tony thought that he did it, but it was actually you. You made her a lot more than that. At least that's what it says in here. What is that? Oh, nothing. Just a day-by-day -day account of her most intimate activities. She kept a diary. I suppose I mentioned. You bet, Russ. But apparently you didn't ring any chimes with her. Sex wasn't your game, according to Cassie. You didn't play it very well, but other people did. The people that you had Tony pimp her out to. It's all in here. Politicians, producers, Bankers, mob honchos like Nathan Backus, you control them all. Very subtle, but still a very deadly form of blackmail. You promised them that you'd keep their affiliation with Cassie out of your column in exchange for certain favors, like investing in her movies, which made you very rich and very powerful. Nathan Backus even killed for you. Nonsense. Unprovable in any court. Maybe. But this sure would keep a jury from dozing off, especially the episode with the investment banker and the hot fudge. <laughs> You're very naive, Mr. Hammer. As far as the great unwashed public is concerned, I'm above reproach. Then reproach this, pal. When you found out that Cassie was gonna leave Tony, you got very nervous. You couldn't manipulate her anymore. She was gonna spill everything. You couldn't take a chance going to a guy like Nathan Backus and having him kill her. He could use that against you. So you decided to do it all by yourself. A simple trip off the balcony, you could handle that. What you didn't know is that she wrote it all down. Every seedy, sweaty step on the road to her fame and your fortune. Look at her. What quality she had. Wistful, sensual, vulnerable, torrid. There was never anybody like her. All she had to do was love me. That's all I asked. I could have given her so much. Opened doors for her she never even knew existed. But she... She could only look at me with nothing but the vilest contempt. I could sense it every time she was with me. Do you know what it's like lying next to someone you love and, and have her sh shudder at, at the... But I wanted her and I had her and I owned her. And I destroyed her. Not completely, pal. Part of her is still here. The part that's going to destroy you. Oh, no. It's maybe a little sordid, but... These days, what isn't? Come on, hand it over. Sure. Catch!
God's sake, Hammer, give me a hand! Hammer! I'll give you a standing ovation. Cassie Conroy was dead, but her image would live on forever. I felt she should be remembered as Manny knew her, as Brad knew her, as the public wanted to remember her, the way I wanted to remember her, too. <laughs>